Good morning, everybody. It's, uh, it's an honor to be here. So uh, just real quick, I'm CEO of Aptio. I started Aptio almost coming up to 10 years ago in uh, beautiful Be Bellevue. Uh, and, and really what we do is we help uh, CIOs manage uh, uh, technology spending, help them manage the planning as well as uh, decisioning into technology budgets. Uh, as John mentioned, we, uh, Aptio is now a public company, and uh, so the only thing I ask is don't ask me about public markets, uh, as I'm learning that they can be pretty fickle. Um, so this is a shout out to our uh, compliance uh, team. I'll be talking about some forward-looking statements today. And uh, that's what happens when you go public. Um, so really, uh, I'm amazed by the innovation which has happened in the, uh, in the cloud world. Uh, in the public cloud world, it has really disrupting the, the on-premise uh, infrastructure as well as application providers. And that's very noticeable when you look at what's happened to organizations like IBM and so forth, right? Um, and if you, if you take a look at the market share today for all the public cloud as well as uh, all the SaaS apps, uh, that size of the market is 250 billion. And that practically did not even exist 10 to 15 years ago. And that market still in 2017 is growing at 17%. And now if you look at the infrastructure space of public cloud, uh, that market share is up to uh, 35 billion in combined revenues, and that market is still growing at a 35%. And we absolutely believe that we are in the very, very early stages of this transformation. So if this is a 20, 30 year cycle, we are probably in the air four or air five. So what lies ahead is really, really exciting. The reality of the situation is that uh, still massive amounts of your infrastructure, massive amount of your applications are still tied in uh, on-premise and legacy environments. We have, uh, at Aptio, we have unprecedented view into the technology spending and consumption patterns, both for on-premise as well as cloud workloads. And we look at the world very much from a hybrid IT perspective. Uh, while workloads, uh, new workloads, as Scott was mentioning in the morning, are getting adopted on services like Amazon and Azure, uh, we also find tremendous amount of investments on on-premise, and we do find many, many of our large customers, which I'll talk about, who still uh, are adopting a multi-cloud strategy. Uh, and a lot of that really depends upon the workloads, the, uh, whether you're cr creating sort of new digital initiatives, New spending, a lot of the new spending is going on uh, the public cloud environments, uh, and some of the larger customers are choosing multi-cloud environments rather than a single cloud provider. And uh, technology is one element of why customers are adopting the public cloud, but there are other factors like uh, uh, relationship with the provider like Microsoft and uh, sales and services, which are also playing a pretty strategic role. So we look at the world as a multi-cloud world, uh, which uh, will create even more complexity for a lot of you from a CIO perspective, from a CTO perspective, and how, do, uh, how you have to manage that. So I started Aptio 10 years ago with the vision that every company is a technology company, as well as technology is powering every major business process in the enterprise. So if you look at order to cash process, if you look at a trading process, uh, majority of that process is all running on technology. And in fact, if the CEO of your organization uh, is not embracing technology to drive new digital work streams, new revenue streams, to drive competition, every CEO uh, who I uh, interact with is very, very concerned about getting Ubered. And what, what is fascinating is that if you look at the world's largest company uh, for, for taxis, Uber, uh, they do not own a single car. It is an entirely a digital platform. If you look at one of the largest uh, hotel companies, Airbnb, they do not own a single uh, home with their renting, right? It is an entire digital platform. And this, uh, this transformation is happening to all of us in all of the industries, no matter what industry you're in. So we believe uh, at Aptio that certainly CIOs, 
chief technology officers, anybody working in technology, are at the center of this uh, digital transformation. And really, uh, CIOs uh, have one of the hardest jobs in the market today because uh, they, are, uh, they are the technical stewards in their organizations. They have to drive digital innovation, and they have to move with the speed of agility. We interact with a lot of CIOs where uh, IT traditionally was a department of no, and that, that has to now respond at the pace of uh, how the business is moving. But the massive challenge which a lot of CIOs and CTOs have is that 70% of your budget is tied into the run side, into maintenance contracts, into labor, hardware, software, data center leases. And uh, sometimes there are some new budgets being applied towards uh, new digital uh, innovations. But a lot of times, CEOs and the boards are asking the CIO to fund the innovation by optimizing the run budget, squeeze the operations, create more efficiency in your data center. Uh, in fact, when I started Aptio in the early days, uh, one of our early customers said, we found that their data center was running at 8% utilization. And they said, imagine if I was running a manufacturing plant at 8% utilization. I would not have my job. And the CIOs have to do this. Uh, we believe cloud is the enabler for this transformation. And certainly, security, uh, agility, cost management is at the center of this transformation. So really, IT is going through one of the most uh, change in this IT operating model, very similarly to uh, what has happened, really, in manufacturing and supply chain principles. We look at uh, technology as one of the most complex supply chains which exists in the world. It is the most complex function in the enterprise. If you think about, uh, on the left-hand side, you have many different resources, many different vendors, uh, labor, infrastructure, data centers, facilities, who are then uh, 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 combining a lot of these parts to produce IT services. They could be anywhere as simple as desktop mobility end users. They could be business-facing applications, business processes, and then ultimately many consumers, whether it's business units within your organizations or whether it's uh, really uh, end cons customers uh, who are really consuming these services. So if you take a look at a simple service uh, like uh, storage, uh, like desktop, and what it really takes to deliver a single service for a CIO, it is thousands and thousands of parts. It's a combination of a little bit of infrastructure, a little bit of software from, from hundreds of vendors, facilities, labor, uh, cloud providers, all kind of combining to kind of create that very, very complex supply chain. And then on top of that, uh, as we have engaged uh, from an Aptio perspective with hundreds and hundreds of our customers, uh, many of our customers are coming to us and saying that, hey, even though I don't manage the entire IT spend, I want to look at the entire footprint of technology being spent in my environments. So we can load up the general ledger for other departments, and we are finding that uh, the spend on technology for shadow IT or, uh, or ungoverned uh, spend can almost be 2x. Uh, in fact, as, as a CEO of Aptio, when we loaded Aptio for Aptio, we found uh, uh, that our spend on uh, technology outside our central IT was uh, more than 2x than what the budget of our CIO was. And, uh, and a lot of the, uh, uh, and by the way, our marketing department was the, was, was the largest uh, culprit with 30 plus SaaS services, right? And uh, so if you really think about billions and billions of dollars being spent on enterprise technology, uh, how do CIOs and CTOs get visibility into that supply chain, both for on-premise as well as uh, cloud services? Hybrid IT is fundamentally complex. Uh, the cloud world has made this thing more complex. Combination of multi-cloud world, and it's, cr and it's creating incredible amount of opportunities uh, for digitization for our CIOs, but it's also creating a massive challenge to how do you manage it uh, from a business perspective. 
So uh, while, while there's a lot of talk really in the market, in our industry, really from a technology perspective of what's happening in the cloud services, we, funda we fundamentally believe managing the business of technology in this very, very complex hybrid IT world is super challenging. This is the reason why we created Aptio. Uh, we are the business system of record for hybrid IT. Uh, we manage uh, hundreds of billions of dollars of spend in our, in our cloud-based platform. We also run data centers as well as run on multiple clouds at scale for customer-facing apps we provide. It's an analytics and a data platform. And our value proposition to our customers is really around providing transparency into the cost and utilization uh, helping plan, uh, helping uh, engage better with your business partners, as well as optimize a little bit of the workloads. Um, so enough on, on Aptio. Uh, we, uh, we have the privilege of being uh, wired into general ledger systems as well as into uh, the invoices from cloud providers. And, uh, and what I'm about to share here is based on really uh, not any third-party market research, but based upon the aggregated and anonymized data which exists in the Aptio environment. So as we look across our customers, large and small, smallest customer we have is probably, call it five million in technology spend, largest customer we have is around 20 billion in uh, technology spend. And uh, so 76% of our customers are uh, leveraging AWS in, in, in order to manage their uh, technology spending. And then 52%, uh, uh, we have seen quite a rise in uh, the Azure services amongst our customers. And then what's amazing is that 29% of our customers are managing multiple environments together. And if you peel uh, this one level deeper, uh, what we are finding is that in the smaller organizations uh, with smaller IT budgets, they're making a decision primarily to go with one public cloud infrastructure provider, such as Amazon uh, or Azure. And the minute you move up to larger organizations, you do see customers adopting multiple cloud services. And uh, customers fundamentally are concerned about vendor lock-in, even, uh, even though very few environments we've seen where there is two portability which exists between multiple clouds. Uh, but customers choose certain workloads, uh, certain applications, like Scott was talking about, whether it's Dynamics or Office 365, SharePoint, a lot of those workloads, uh, customers uh, want to kind of migrate those first into, uh, into, the, uh, into the public cloud uh, on Azure platform. Uh, the other element which we are finding with our customers is, uh, especially in these large, complex enterprises, that the relationship with the organization absolutely matters. They're looking for great uh, sales and services support. Uh, so if you, if you just think about Microsoft for a second, uh, Microsoft is managing whatever 8 to 10% of every enterprise IT's budget across a wide variety of software and uh, services. So uh, customers uh, do trust them as a provider. So, so they're saying, like, like hey, I, I, I do want good service. I do want support. And we know Amazon has invested deeply in that capability. So that is a very important part to our uh, customers as well. And then uh, financial services was one of the uh, last vertical, in our opinion, to adopt the public cloud. Uh, working with some of our very, very large banks now, we are helping them migrate close to $200, $300 million worth of infrastructure and apps from on-premise into the public cloud. And we, we believe that trend will continue. But fundamentally, the world will remain into a hybrid IT world. So we uh, did this survey uh, with a lot of the CIOs. And while many CIOs embrace the public cloud and the migration towards the public cloud, there are, there are some CIOs uh, who have not embraced a public cloud. So it's, again, in very, very early phases of this adoption. And so when we surveyed uh, hundreds of these CIOs, uh, I was actually surprised by what we learned from them that other than the technology barriers, they said one of the fundamental barriers for cloud adoption is embracing the hybrid IT mindset. And there were really three factors uh, which a lot of the CIOs kind of gave us on that. Number one, broad willingness to participate in a marketplace. 
So rather than building everything on my own, uh, having a mindset that, hey, uh, there are millions and millions of developers out there who are creating innovation, and do I have a mindset of embracing and kind of procuring that innovation from the outside rather than having to build something from our own? And we still run into a lot of that kind of mindset uh, with, with CTOs. Number two, it's leading a lot of the CIOs to say, how do I develop internally or procure services externally? Which leads them to become an incredible business and value broker of services. We absolutely believe this is the modern CIO. This is kind of where the role of the technology function has to go. And, and shifting their mindset, uh, we've had a lot of CIOs and CTOs come to us and said that, hey, would you educate our board on what, it, what does it take? Uh, because this is not just a CIO conversation. This is a CEO conversation. This is a conversation which is happening at a lot of the, uh, at a lot of the traditional enterprise uh, boards as well. And then when you really delve into the technology part of what are the unique challenges which cloud has uh, put in from a business management perspective, these are the common challenges we hear about. Number one, uh, we uh, talk to a lot of customers who say, hey, I'm making decisions based upon emotion, based upon gut, without any facts of which workloads to move from on-premise to the public cloud. So how do I make data-driven decisions based on true cost transparency. What does it cost for me to run this workload on-premise versus in the public cloud? How do I compare that to the pricing models of multiple cloud providers? Uh, as Scott even alluded to it, many of our customers have a lot of their cost structure tied onto leases uh, and, and into, uh, into the CapEx model. Cloud fundamentally is forcing an OpEx model onto the organizations. So how do you financially model the migration from CapEx to OpEx? When do those leases run out? When are you able to invest? And how do you shift the organization moving from a CapEx to the OpEx model? Thirdly, managing and optimizing the costs and consumption. Cloud is fundamentally driving a consumption-driven economy, very different than the world which we all have lived in, in the perpetual world. So how do you continuously manage cost and consumption? One of the customers I was talking to, uh, it's a fairly large public company, and they, they said, boy, everything is on the cloud now. We are having a really, really hard time predicting our cost of goods sold for our services, uh, even for Wall Street, because uh, the spike in the public cloud spending has kind of gone through the roof. Forecasting variable cloud spending, and then uh, ultimately uh, talking to a university the other day, they have 25 different disparate accounts across Amazon and Azure, many different disparate bills. How do I aggregate all this spend, and how do I manage this more from a central perspective? And really, this is, uh, this is really our vision for the world of a hybrid IT world, and then how do we enable a new discipline, a new paradigm? How do we, how do we take technology organizations, how do we take people uh, uh, working in technology organizations and make them business stewards and b uh, value and business brokers without, uh, without you having to go to business school. So maybe just a few uh, kind of screenshots just to uh, provide uh, some concreteness to the value proposition. This screenshot is giving you spend of uh, Amazon versus Azure versus Concur, all my SaaS services, not only what you're spending from a billing perspective, what your internal labor is, what you're spending on security for, the, for that cloud services, what are you spending on management, and so forth. So you, you're able to make data-driven decisions. Uh, this is all around making informed cloud migration decisions. Uh, looking at the VMware profile, what instances you have running, what is the utilization, both from a memory footprint perspective, and then automatically mapping these instances to the taxonomy which may exist in both Azure as well as uh, Amazon. So it, you're able to make kind of true pricing comparisons based upon the fully loaded cost structure which may exist within your environment. And then uh, once you're on the public cloud, uh, like how do you really manage and optimize that spend between reserved instances, spot instances, how many instances are running idle, uh, you know, where can you create that level of efficiency 
what type of contracts you should be really driving with these public cloud pro providers to kind of manage that spend more efficiently. And then lastly, aggregating your spend uh, across the vendors, doing an appropriate showback or a chargeback of the cloud spend, uh, kind of having alerts in place in case there are price changes from Amazon and Azure. So, so on a daily basis, you're up to speed in terms of kind of what are some of the challenges and what decisions you should be making based upon real data. So uh, let me end with this. Uh, it's an it's a incredible story for one of our thought leaders in the space, uh, CIO of AOL. And uh, we engaged with, uh, with James almost three years ago. They had a massive issue around, uh, around uh, all their costs being tied onto the on-premise infrastructure. And uh, they were trying to move with lightning speed. And, uh, and James started to invest in a lot of the Amazon environment. They were making a lot of decisions which were based on emotion. They've, over, over the last two to three years, leveraging some of the analytics, they've been able to migrate over $100 million worth of uh, infrastructure spend. They're leveraging both Amazon and Azure environments. And then what's more important is once they were on Amazon and Azure, they've been able to optimize 80% of that spend. And just imagine the amount of capital that has freed up for their organizations to invest in new digitization initiatives. And, uh, and uh, it is primarily around spot instances, reserved instances, utilization profiles, kind of having all the right, uh, uh, you know, the right contracts in place with the vendors. Uh, it is a privilege to be here with you. The thing I wanted to leave you with was all of you are doing amazing innovation for your respective organizations. You are, we all in, in Seattle are at the forefront of this transformation. Uh, the cloud uh, journey has really started in Seattle. L all the stuff you do for your organizations is, is digitizing your organizations. It's creating new revenue streams. And, uh, and we are here as a community together to support each other, to embrace not only the technology mindset, but also the business mindset. So just wanted to say thank you very much.